Today on a very emotional tips for the knife maker, old shop to new shop. Hey, Walter Sorrell's back with another Tips for the Knife Maker. You know, I'm joking, but actually I've spent over two decades in this shop. A lot of memories, a lot of sparks, a lot of chips flying. I hate to go. Well, no, actually I don't. I outgrew this shop a long time ago, and now it's high time to move on. Uh, I do have a lot of memories, but I'm also incredibly excited uh, about what the future holds for the new shop uh, that I'm going to be moving into. Some of you guys probably watched the video that I made last week uh, about the condition of my shop and announcing that I'm going to be moving to a new shop. Now, if you missed it, the gist of the video was that my old shop, which I've used for over 20 years, basically it's a two-car garage, has now been replaced. We're moving to a new house that my wife and I purchased this month. Uh, basically with the sole purpose of moving me into a new shop and man have I got more space now now in an upcoming video I'll talk about the decision process that I went through in finding my new shop why it happened uh, when it did how it did and all that sort of thing but today I'm just going to show the move and talk a little bit about what it's like to carry 20 plus years worth of accumulated tools and materials from one place to another. So first, here's the old place. Way, way, way too small to clutter 10 pounds of crap in a five pound bag. If you watch my videos over the years, you've seen it a zillion times. And here's the new shop. Literally four times as much space, maybe even five. The first challenge was just boxing up all the stuff from the old shop. Some of the things I dug up as I worked my way through here were just junk that needed to be thrown away. You know, it's a standard decluttering kind of exercise. But most of the stuff I have in my shop actually gets used, so most of it had to go to the new place. First stop, Lowe's, where I literally cleaned out the entire store of 27-gallon bins. On sale, 11 bucks a pop. Score! It basically took me a week to get everything packed. Not working nine to five, obviously, but there was a lot of stuff. Hand tools, power tools, steel, wood, titanium, aluminum, copper, brass, plastic stock, screws, half-made knives, drill bits, end mills, measuring tools, granite surface plates, paint brushes. I mean, on and on and on. If it fit in a bin, it went in a bin. Truly amazing how much stuff I'd managed to pack into this tiny space. As I filled them, I labeled each bin so I wouldn't be completely lost while I'm getting organized in the new shop. To move everything over to the new place, about 40 miles from my current house and shop, I rented a 15-foot U-Haul truck. And before all was said and done, I had schlepped four fairly full U-Haul loads of stuff over to the shop. Lots of it heavy. Most of it I carried myself. I imagine I picked up a good... I don't know, five tons, 10 tons of stuff by the time it was all over. And I'm not being hyperbolic about those numbers because you pick it up and you move it over here and then you pick it up again and then you stick it in the truck and then you pull it out. It's a lot of work. My 60-ish year old body thanked me incessantly the whole time for providing it with such a stimulating workout. In all seriousness though, if I hadn't kept myself in reasonable shape over the years, this just flat would not have been doable without hiring riggers or movers. I was also gifted a bunch of training tables by a company that was going virtual and needed to offload an office full of furniture. Thanks a ton to Joe Rector for making this happen. They'll end up doing services, workbenches, tool benches, even as desks. What a concept, using a desk as a desk. I think I got eight of them. I could easily have found use for more. More schlepping, and my wife's pitching in here. Other than that little piece though, Pretty much all the first push was just a solo effort. I was really fortunate, though, to have big-time help with the hardest part of the job, which was moving all the really heavy equipment. I've got a Grizzly metal lathe, a Tormach CNC machine, a Tormach surface grinder, a Riverside machine 24-ton press, an Enco mill drill, all of which weigh in at 
you know, anywhere from 500 to 1,500 plus pounds. Also, there's a lot of reasonably heavy other stuff ranging from my Ameribraid and Bader belt grinders, my bandsaw, my table saw. That's it hanging from the rafters because I couldn't fit it anywhere else. Down to, you know, smaller tools like chop saws, miter saws, bench grinders, disc grinders, all that kind of stuff. And every one of them was heavy, and despite my efforts to clean them, they were absolutely bathed in grinder dust, needle sharp chips, oil, or some combination of the three. Fortunately, my incredibly generous buddies Dan and Mike drove up from Florida to help. I ended up using an engine hoist for lifting all the heavy stuff. The shop was too small to fit a forklift, and unlike pallet jacks and dollies and stuff like that, only an engine hoist can lift machinery high enough to get it off the floor and up onto stands. Even if I had a gantry, which I don't, it wouldn't fit in here. I also rented a trailer from Home Depot to haul the biggest tools. Two trips there, along with another full load trip in my U-Haul. Now it looks real nice and quick and speedy motion, but it is not. We were basically busy from the crack of dawn until well after the sun went down. Needless to say, machine tools are high precision items and just one little tiny bump could severely damage them. Worse yet, if the engine hoist failed or a chain broke or I just screwed up and one of the tools actually dropped, then that's thousands of bucks just going straight to the scrap yard. Not to mention somebody could be seriously injured. I mean, really seriously hurt. Also, needless to say, we had to be pretty careful about how we balanced the loads on the trailer, you know, just making damn sure to strap them down carefully. Dropping a lathe in the middle of I-285 at 70 miles an hour is not a cool thing. So, in addition to all the physical work, it was a pretty nerve-wracking day. Now, because many of the stands I used for my big tools were actually built-ins at the old shop, or frankly, just kind of janky and improvised, I had to just stick all the big tools on the floor in the new shop while I worked out permanent stand arrangements for them. More about that in upcoming videos. So here's the posse at the end of the day, right before we headed up to the house for some adult beverages. The selfie does not begin to do justice to just how filthy we were by the time the work was over. Again, I cannot thank Dan and Mike enough for coming up and helping out. Just really, really cool of them to do that. Don't know how I would have done it without you guys. After Dan and Mike headed back to Florida, I made yet another trip back to the old house, emptied the shop of one last load. Now, I naively imagined it was going to be just, you know, a few items and then I'd sweep it up and yet again, I completely stuffed the 15-footer with gear. Lumber, steel, tables, cables, I mean, you name it. There was a lot more stuff left after Dan and Mike went home than, you know, I thought would be there. So after a solid day of emptying out and cleaning the old space, here's how it looked. From this to this. Unbelievable. Honestly, though, a lot of mixed emotions. My wife and I spent 25 years in this house, raised a son, went through a lot of stuff, and I went from a guy who barely knew one end of a hammer from the other to, you know, whatever it is I am today. Onward and upward, right? So here's how it looked in the new shop with all the stuff scattered around. Again, it's just amazing that this huge collection of stuff all fit in that tiny garage. So now comes what's actually the trickiest part. I mean, it's not as physically demanding, but... There's just a lot to it, and that's getting organized, 
getting everything stored, and most importantly, slinging chips and making sparks. Right now, I don't have one single working tool, not one. I gotta start banging iron to pay for this place. So, in the next week or two, I'll show some of what it takes to actually get the new shop up and running, and maybe talk about some lessons for organizing your shop. Having dealt with a small home shop for a lot of years, I can tell you there's some things I did well and some I did not. Also, thoughts on setting up a new shop from scratch. Also, because everybody's always interested in money, I'll do a quick video about how much it costs to make the move and get the new place functioning. Bottom line, I'm amazingly excited. You know, it's not like I have any more gear at the new place than I did at the old place. But the fact is that I've been prevented from doing a lot of cool things in the old place that I'll be free to do, you know, more of or in a better way uh, in the new place. Obviously, because I've got more space, I can get more guys in to help me, which will especially help with the Tactics Armory mid-tech, you know, production type knives. Um, but... Maybe even more importantly, it opens up a lot of doors in, I guess you'd call it the instructional sort of realm, classes, hosting hammer-ins, smelts, just all kinds of cool stuff. Um, some of it I probably haven't even thought of yet. But again, that's for another day. Thanks for making this journey with me, and keep on making those knives. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like what we're doing here, please subscribe and make sure that you click on that bell so you get notified of all the latest videos. Want to buy a knife from me? Check out my modern blades at tacticsarmory.com. Digging the channel? You can support our video making efforts on Patreon. You know, I've been banging away on these videos for like 10 years, so I hope you'll show some love for all that hard work. Link in the cards and descriptions. Finally, if you're interested in making Japanese swords, check out my full line of Japanese sword videos where I show how to forge Japanese swords as well as how to polish them and how to make fittings, handles, and scabbards.